Good morning, everyone. So my name is Aurélie Soulier. I work at the Royal Agricultural University in Sarancester, the southwest uh, of England. I've been there for only six months this week now, so it's quite new. Uh, before that, I was at Cranfield University um, at the um, Defence Academy uh, in Oxfordshire. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you um, about finding your perfect blend and ingredients. Uh, so that's uh, about looking at what are your perfect ingredients to make the perfect meal for your students to deliver the best learning experience for them. So if you don't like running analogies and metaphors, you're going to suffer. Um, so first of all, um, I'm going to talk to you through the background of uh, the Royal Agricultural University, uh, the values and principles that we are uh, looking at in our courses, um, building our menus, cooking times, uh, who are the chefs in front of houses, front of house, and uh, putting a menu together, um, the techniques we use, the recipes, the ingredients, and how what our experience, what is the perfect blend for us, but also looking at maybe you questioning what is your perfect blend to design uh, learning online and blended. <coughs> so first of all, um, this is where I work, and I'm very lucky. Uh, that's just the front. Inside it actually looks like Hogwarts, which is really cool. Um, so, um, meet some night's dream. Um, lead, uh, the Royal Agricultural University are leader in land-based education since 1845. Uh, it makes it the um, oldest agricultural, agricultural university uh, in the English-speaking world. So, we're very fortunate that we have a long history. Um, and we're set in a 24 acres of um, um, pictures green grounds, and we have 20 um, programs. Uh, they are based around different areas, agriculture, food and environment. We have uh, business and entrepreneurship, and some of the courses I'm going to talk to you are around these areas. Uh, we also have um, um, equine management and science, real estate and land management. And um, one of our partners is the UCEM um, um, uh, land management uh, university in Reading, and I'll be mentioning them in a bit as well. We have two university farms, and I've been fortunate enough to visit some of them and do some filming, which is really, really fun. One equine center providing practical experience for our students, uh, and we've been awarded uh, teaching excellence framework in 2017 as well. <clears throat> so, the Catalyst project. Now, it's not to be confused with Catalyst IT. Uh, there are funding projects uh, that we've been uh, getting grants for. This is the Catalyst project. This was, an, at the time, HEFKI, now Office for Students and Catalyst funding, uh, that has been uh, awarded to the Royal Agricultural University, and we are developing a series of programs. Any content that's being delivered, any interactivity, anything that happens during the module leads to building and scaffolding their learning towards that assessment. Um, and we have key pillars. So we've got four pillars uh, for the Catalyst programs, and they are our core values. And we try and make sure when we talk to the academics, when um, the program leads are um, talking to academics as well, that we always reinforce those pillars and they are present throughout the course as a culture, effectively. Um, so, um, so they are all the way through teaching assessment and feedback. Um, the first one is inspired, so it's learning from others. The second one is reflect, um, applying to your situation, so students reflecting on, on uh, their learning to apply it through their situation. Innovate, so that's looking at evidence-based approach, making sure people are equipped to innovate, and lead, which involves working with others. So throughout the program, throughout the development of the activities, we always make sure these pillars are present. <clears throat> so, um, Here's the analogy. <laughs> Welcome to your dinner party, or come learn with me. Uh, how do you set up the best menus for your guests? So the, the key thing is, or whether you're in a restaurant or you're setting a dinner party, you need to think about key things. And we're looking at the ingredients, the dishes, the recipes, the menus, but above all, what do your guests need? 
And this is what we base everything around, is what, what are your audience and what do they need? What are they trying to achieve? Uh, so do you throw all the ingredients and spices together in a random dish and leave it all to cook by itself? Uh, do you use the same ingredients for different dishes? Do you vary them? Um, and why can't you just serve everyone the same thing and just um, hope that they will just be satisfied? So the same goes for learning. So our uh, cooking times, our um, development schedule. So we've got a, uh, we work with the academics over two sets of modules development. So those uh, two programs I've mentioned, the MBA and the MSc, I've got four shared modules and each four modules plus a research method and dissertation or applied projects depending on the student's focus. Um, so um, a colleague of mine, Chantal, um, and, um, um, and, and, and others uh, are looking at, we've looked at the development cycle and Chantal and I have split the modules between us and we work with module leaders for each of those. So the first set of modules happened from last October until uh, February, and we developed six of those modules with the academics um, uh, involved. And now we're working through six others, the research methods and the dissertation and applied project. And our schedule looks like this. So that's the dev development timeline. Um, somebody's already asked me about that yesterday. If you want to have a copy, I'm happy to share. Um, so we are going through those to have a basically nine month development plan. We've got 12 weeks, a little break, 12 weeks, some adjustments, uh, media productions and things like that. And then we are going to start those in October. Uh, so it's quite a, a short schedule. And um, added to that, we are running some CPDs courses as well because our staff just aren't used to using learning technology much. Um, so it's quite an intensive um, process. Um, but one of the key things that we've learned is that we have had to change the process as we went. So after the set one of modules, we had to adjust things. Um, what, one thing we added is an interim design workshops and action planning so that this, we work like as an intensive phase with the staff going through development and then um, and then quality review meeting and a show and tell, which I call a module fest, basically, where everybody goes together and discuss their modules and they still have three weeks before the end of the development to make adjustments. Um, and our academics overall have really embraced that, uh, even though we were new staff, uh, et cetera. So it's been uh, quite good. So uh, we've got a module approval after 12 weeks. Um, in cooking, you have to pick up your pots and pans and you have, um, here we've got key templates that we've been using to support the learning design process. Uh, on the startup days, we've got de design conversations, we've got some cards over there, uh, content template for the interim design um, uh, of the activities with a uh, title for themes, um, and um, the action plan as well, which is a spreadsheet and a quality review meeting form. So we've got a series of forms that support this um, uh, there. Um, so the um, menu is our module stages, that's the actual, the, the actual running of the, modu the modules, and um, this is how everything will be delivered and uh, so our, our meal will happen, basically. Um, and um, the chefs, so for us, we, considers, we, we consider we are the teaching team and learning technologies have to work together to cook these uh, courses. Um, so um, we have, as I mentioned, split the modules between us. We've got a digital project manager and um, uh, the module leads are basically our cooks and front of house because they'll be delivering it as well. Uh, and we've got our program managers, which are basically the head chefs and, and over, over, uh, overlooking everything. Um, and as you like it, the critics, our students, um, uh, they will be, um, uh, so MBA students will have um, two years experience in management and uh, they come from various backgrounds. So we have to make sure we, we focus on all their needs uh, through the development. Uh, very quickly, because I'm running late. <laughs> um, if you follow a recipe, you know exactly what you're having for dinner. And so we have put together templates on Moodle to actually get um, uh, this happening effectively. Um, and uh, we use one topic per page. Uh, so each topic has a picture. And when you open, uh, when you click on the headings, it opens basically. And that's um, how we're using this template. <clears throat> 
Um, so we've got some ingredients, a lot of Moodle tools. Uh, we are using uh, some plugins like the um, um, completion, uh, so progress block, uh, database forum, a lot of H5P, uh, Moodle assignments, um, uh, and the workflow to go with it. We've got um, external uh, non-Moodle tools as well. We use Mahara, um, um, Tally's reading list, uh, and uh, the answer garden as well. Um, and one of our favorite labels. We love labels. We, we are are always trying to make sure the staff are adding narrative throughout their content and, um, and guiding the students through their learning. So this is our own blend, our recipe for success, hopefully, when it started to be delivered in um, um, October. Um, what I'd like to do as I'm nearly finishing this presentation is for you to consider what are your key ingredients, what are your audience or your, your customers or guests, and what do they really need when you design your learning. Uh, so to choose tools to support the academics developing the content, but also uh, more importantly support the students learning what they need to learn. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I love the food and the recipe analogy. So we have five minutes, slightly more actually, uh, for questions if you want to ask Aurélie some questions about Moodle or indeed about food. <laughs> <laughs> can try. Uh, we've got, so we've got two microphones, one over there, one over there. Becky? Oh, thank you. Actually, it was one thing I just missed. You know you had the four pillars, so the second one was reflect, then innovate and lead. What was the first one? Uh, oh, sorry. Inspired. 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 Yeah, it's the only one that's not a verb. That's uh -huh. an adjective for some reason. So, yeah. Yeah, Thank it you. was uh, over there. Uh, yeah. Inspired, reflect, innovate, and lead. There you go. Thanks, Andy. I, I suppose I'm, my question is really around you working with the academics. Um, did you find their level of digital literacy was such that you were talking very much about content as opposed to kind of, you know, this is how we need to look at it to look in a forum or whatever? Or, or what were the, maybe the, the things that you remember from your discussions with the, the faculty, with the tutors? Um, we had uh, um, different uh, different levels of digital literacy, and um, I must say these academics have mostly been handpicked to work on the program because they were um, uh, more digital, digitally apt or at least open to to different things. But we still had to to re-educate some of them to do some uh, um, a different approach and to actually explain different things. So some things like just um, explaining to them talk to, to the student, say you as a person. There's only one person who's going to look at your page. In the narrative, say you're going to look at this now, you know, actually address the students as a person here. Uh, little things like that. But also the program lead, who are really excited and in, uh, inspired and who did all these pillars, were like, oh, you need to develop this amount of content in this number of weeks. And all. it was like, no, make it fit what they need. So we had to, you know, reshape some of the things. But we were lucky enough to work with some people who were open to that. Uh, the main challenges for us were staff not given time to work on it, even though it was a priority program. Okay, we'll have Mark, and then depending on how long you're <laughs> maybe one more. Um, so. Along the same lines as to, to, to what you're answering, my question is, did you manage to, to change the pedagogy as to how they were actually approaching stuff um, through the use of this technology? I think we did, uh, because some people have now said, and that's the whole point of this Catalyst project, is actually to inspire people to use this in, in, the, in their face-to-face -face and online learning and other things. And we did, because some staff are going to use now some of the tools, methods, approach and interaction throughout their other courses. So I think we managed to change the, the pedagogical approach. Okay. One more, anyone? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so not wanting to stereotype, but some of the learners that come into the agricultural industry and land-based industry mightn't be the most digital-oriented people that you come across. 
have you got any plans in place to prep the learners for this awesome content that you've put together? Yeah, so we do have, we've got the research uh, methods module, which will run, be running throughout the course, which will be uh, about study skills as well as, as well as research methods. And, and yes, you are familiar with this environment. And it was the same where in my previous institution, where we came with people who hadn't been in studies for a long time, or come from a different background, and we do need to have those study skills support there. Um, and that's something that we've been considering. But in particular, more online focused? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so one of the things we've been looking at is developing a short package about preparing to study online at the REU. But we're not there yet. So that's the next challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.